Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, and Lord Mayor. I have a grudge against my brother. <laughs> the Vice Chancellor mentioned a film in which we serve, which came to Leicester in, I think, 1942. Uh, and it was my first job. And when it came to Leicester, because I was a Leicester lad, the posters ignored John Mills and Noel Coward and Celia Johnson, etc., and starred this young man from Leicester with a part which I can assure you, if you'd coughed at the wrong moment, you'd have missed me. <laughs> However, I had a younger brother. And uh, the thought that a member of the family should be caught uh, prancing about in public was really beyond any possible acceptance. <laughs> and so that at school, with the Wiggy Boys, I happened to know that when somebody said to Dave, Aeopati said, is this Richard Attenborough a relation of yours? <laughs> Dave drew himself to his not inconsiderable height and replied, only distant. <laughs> <laughs> Dave and I actually have got on reasonably well uh, through the years. Although I do have to tell you that sometimes we have been mistaken one for the other. And I was in the United States promoting Gandhi and a, a lady came through the crowd at a reception and said, oh, oh, Mr. Attenborough, oh, Mr. Attenborough, what an honor, what an honor. My whole family, when I go back and tell, Mr. Attenborough, when I saw the way you handled those gorillas, <laughs> I knew that Gandhi was in good hands. <laughs> One of the most racist remarks I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Dave was here in Leicester for a year at university. And then he went with great distinction to Clare College in Cambridge. I did not go to university. I left school when I was just 17 and I shortly went into the Air Force from RADA. It is unequivocally the greatest regret of my life and I can only say that the privileges that I have been granted at various universities, but most particularly here in Leicester, and as the Vice Chancellor has mentioned at Sussex, it has been a gift granted me which I never thought would ever come my way. And I say that it is a gift given me because sometimes I'm not absolutely certain that we are as aware as we might be about the privilege of higher and university education. I was in Mozambique a short time ago with my wife and uh, I was there for UNICEF. And it was shortly after the floods and I remember walking down a very narrow path, I suppose, scarcely a roadway, down which was running filthy sewer water. The whole place was in an awful undeveloped state. And I came across a very statuesque black woman sitting underneath four steps, posts with a bit of canvas on the top. And she was hammering out Coca-Cola tins and giving them to a child to put on a, a pile way down there which was to be sold. And as one does on such occasions with a stupidity and a banality which is shameful, you, f you desperately try and find something to say, some 
idiotic remark to make. My job was to try and report back to UNICEF what I found there. But I thought I should ask this noble woman, what if she had a choice in the world? What, what might she ask for? And I knew at the back of my mind she was going to ask for some clean water, or food, or clothes, or employment. And she didn't ask for any of them. What would you wish for, I said. Education, she said, for my children. And I cannot remember, forget that without getting the hairs raised on the back of my neck. I, I thought it was absolutely extraordinary. A woman with absolutely nothing had the perception to know just how valuable education, almost beyond anything, was in her priorities. The thing that I miss most at university, although my profession has granted me the privileges on a number of occasions, is the community that you joined. Yes, of course, academia. Yes, of course, the degree. Yes, of course, marvellous, as Dave said, bravo to you who have worked to get to this particular position today. But also during the two, three, four years that you have been here, you have been part of a community made up of people from a huge expanse of different backgrounds. Not just international, which is enough, not just from different colors and creeds, but in our own communities, people who you might perhaps not have met under any other circumstances. And that, I think, most of all, is what I wish I had experienced at university. You will finish here, you will go out, you will take all sorts of distinguished positions in your professions, evidenced by your degrees today, but you will also take out an understanding that relationship with human beings, one to the other, with different backgrounds, different beliefs, different circumstances, different views, each will bring benefit to the other. Each will be granted the opportunity of perhaps understanding the foibles and the concerns and the embarrassments and the difficulties of a and other. And if on leaving university we can take that, or rather you can take that, into our national life and international life and how important it is, it is that it is at this university an international community, how important it is to somehow find that we have discovered ways of facing up to the shortcomings of our supposed civilized world. You have a wonderful opportunity. You have great chance to help others to understand, which you have come to understand in this community, the feelings of tolerance, of compassion, of concern, and belief that every creature on earth is deserving of our care and thought and concern. I join with my brother David in, in congratulating you on your great achievement. I wish you good health, I wish you happiness, and I wish you a world in which we will all live in peace. Thank you, Sean, for watching.